Big controversial statement. You ready? And it's the term theme. Well, maybe even be longer than a term. We'll see how far we go with this. There's nothing better than Jesus. Who just said that? Did you just read my mind? Oh, you read the screen. Nice. Nothing better than Jesus. Yes. Nothing better than Jesus. Every week, we're going to grapple, think about that statement. There's nothing better than Jesus. Do you agree? Fantastic. You know, when I first, you know, thought about this, if, I, if Matt was talking to me right now, so we'll go like third person, I might say, I don't know, Matt. My wife, Asha, is a really, really awesome friend of mine. She loves me so much. Is Jesus really better than my awesome wife, Asha? Shout out. Yeah. Or even my two daughters, who are really, really cute and just deserve all the cuddles and kisses in the world, okay? Is Jesus really better than them? Because I have a lot of fun and enjoyment just from being with them, okay? Now, 15-year-old Matt would probably say, I don't know, Matt, the person that I like is pretty hot. My KDR on insert first-person shooter game is extremely high, which wasn't always true. Yeah, or as I've written here, Slurpees from 7-Eleven are pretty sweet in both metaphorical and literal ways, okay? Because that was the lingo back in the day, you know, sweet, sweet as. There's nothing better than Jesus. What's your response to that? You can say yes, but is it actually true to you? You know, for the next little while, we're going to have each week a different leader get up and share their thoughts about this statement, and they're going to reveal some stuff from the Gospel of Luke. And in fact, I'm even hoping that each and every week we can have young people who are here who believe that statement and want to share it as well in What's Your Story? Uh, even in four weeks' time, we're going to have a youth takeover night where we're hoping to give the night over to whoever wants to run it and do whatever you want to do in four weeks' time. And so we need somebody to get up here at the front and speak. I don't know who that is but I want someone to do it. So come, if you want to do it, then come and tell me, okay? But let's now just look into the Word and check out how this guy feels about Jesus. Okay, I'll tell you who this guy is in a second. So Ben, let's look at it. Go to the first verse, please, Mr. Ben Morley. Shout out to Ben Morley, who's in the back doing the words right now. Boom, all right. Here we go. Let's check this out. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value. Say infinite. Infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage. Say garbage. That's a fun word to say. Garbage. Garbagi, so that I could gain Christ and become one with Him. Okay, this is a small segment from a letter called Philippians from Paul. Paul has written a lot in the Bible, and most, if not all, of his letters at some point, if not the whole letter, is spelling out that Jesus is better than anything else in this world, with many different thoughts and themes, right? But I want to kind of just zoom in for a second on this passage and just think about some of these, a couple of words that come up a few times here, all right? So let's just go to uh, Philippians 3, 7. It says, I once thought these things were valuable. Give me the, the cash symbol, the international symbol of cash. Yes. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Here's the big idea. It's very straightforward. There were things that were valuable to Paul that are now garbage to him. Things that once were the biggest deal to him are now, because of what Jesus has done, worthless, insignificant, probably not out of his life, but to be honest, in comparison, worth nothing compared to what he's found in Jesus, right? 
valuable, something that's important to you, something that means a lot, something that you wouldn't trade or give up easily. You know, we were in the Gold Coast for this last week. It's way warmer in the Gold Coast than it is here and less smokier too, I must say. Actually, no smoke, I can report. But um, put up the first picture here. I was walking... I haven't been to the Gold Coast in, like, since I was a teenager. This is a very random picture, okay? There's a bus in the background, that's right. But I was just amazed at how many huge buildings there are on the Gold Coast, okay? Now, I was passing these, like, real estate shops, and I saw this cool model of a future massive building. So you can see it here. I don't know how many levels that would be, probably 35. Someone's probably going to start counting it now, the biggest one, okay? Now, this model looked awesome. You zoom in really close and kind of look around, you see these little tiny people walking around the streets, the little bus and stuff, okay? It was a cool looking model. But then, now this is just standard stock footage and you'll see why. Go to the next one. When you actually walk around the city, do you like the little watermarks? I just forgot to take a picture. You look up, this is from the Gold Coast, you look up and I had Ivor on my shoulders at different points and I said, look up at this building and she's like, whoa! Because it's so huge, like the scale of it is so huge, right? Now, I want to use this as a bit of an analogy to get you thinking about this verse in Philippians about valuable things becoming worthless. You know, this model at this point is valuable in lots of different ways. People who want to buy a little apartment, it's valuable to them because they're going to see what the building looks like. People who are going to build the building, it's valuable because they're going to get a big picture on what the plans kind of look like. And the real estate agents probably love it too because it looks really cool in their shop window, this cool model that has actual lights that light up and stuff like that, okay? But once the building is built, that model, as valuable as it is, is now essentially worthless compared to the building that now stands 35 to 40 floors in the sky. You hear what I'm saying? It was once valuable... But in comparison, it's worthless, right? If somebody came in here and said, do you want to completely own a 35-foot sorry, floor building or do you want this model of it? Which one would you choose? Yeah, some of you would choose the model because it's easier to put in a car. But everyone would say, of course I want a massive building in the Gold Coast, right? It is infinitely more valuable than the model. And yet for a time, there was value in the model because the building didn't exist. You get where I'm going with this? It's kind of similar. Again, I used to play with like little Hot Wheels cars, okay? But now that I have a car, my Ferrari Corolla, which I'm going to put up here, shout out Next Level Media. Just vibing, all right? Just chilling. Next Level Media, shout out, follow. Um, We, (laughs) I don't care about little Hot Wheels anymore. Those things are not, they were valuable. Now my Corolla is way more valuable. Okay, so you get the analogy, right? So what did Paul think was valuable? If we go back to that verse, Philippians 3, 7, he says, I once, I once thought these things were valuable. What are the things that he thought? Um, I could go through the parts before it, but I'm not going to do that. Essentially, what he points out are all the major parts that made up his identity, Now, these might seem boring to you, but to be honest, they're actually pretty important parts. He talks about his culture, his religion, the country that he's part of, that he lives in, his family, and his career. All of these things that were precious to him, and to be honest, they are precious to us, right? Our family, precious. Don't get the message that your family's worthless. I'm not saying that, okay? But all of these things to him were so, so valuable. And yet, now, he's saying that they're worthless. What? What is so good about Jesus that he can say this? That in comparison, all these things that have made me who I am are now worthless in comparison to what I found in Jesus. Something has happened to him that has completely flipped the way he sees it. Okay, so stick with me. Are you with me? Okay, so what do you think is valuable? You've kind of maybe already answered this question if you've thought about, you know, 
the whole there's nothing better than Jesus and then in your head you've been like, oh, I don't know. My new AirPod Pros are pretty awesome. My Air Force Ones are sick. Whatever you think is valuable. Okay, whatever you think is valuable is going to be in competition with other things, okay? And that's how you're going to determine the value. All right, so I want you to actually really start to think about what are some valuable things. And I, and I do hope and pray that you're still soaring above distraction from your phones, okay? Focus in here. But I was thinking about what are the things in life that are kind of like the overarching valuable things, okay? So I want you just to think about these statements. There's heaps of other things, but just think about these, okay? The first one is someone to love, okay? Bam. Someone to love. I just need somebody to love. Sorry, that was on the notes. That's a very old song too. I've just realized that I'm 30. Justin Bieber is now 25 <laughs> or something like that, okay? Anyway, stay on the track. Don't go Justin Bieber. Let's stay on the track here. Okay. When I think about valuable things, all of us, I would say, someone to love is something that we want, that's valuable to us, okay? Next one, some people who care. Yes, great if we have someone that we love, but it would also be great to have some people, a community who cares about us. Three, something to live for. If we had something to live for, which I hope we all do, okay, then that is valuable in our life. And then four, drip. Massive drip, okay? Now, I don't just mean clothing, although some people are looking very dripped up, but I kind of just more mean the way that we, we look to other people, okay? The way that we look to other people, but that's just a little keeping it relevant. All right, so let me bring this around. In Jesus, Paul found someone so valuable, so good, so loving, that he looked back at the things that he valued most and those things were worthless. Check this out. We've already read it out, but I want to emphasize it. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. So what happened? What happened here? What happens to make what appeared to him valuable be, you know, basically turn into garbage, right? Now, the second part of this verse, which if you caught it, you know where it's going. It says this, bam. I once thought these things, no, no, we've already done that one. No, I'm just going to read it. There's been a glitch in the matrix here. That is verse 7, but it's saying that it's 8b. Oh, oh cool, fantastic, okay. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For His sake, I have discarded everything, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with Him. Jesus has done something. Jesus has done something. Do you know what He's done? Do you know what He's done? Rhetorical question. Do you know what He has done? You know, so many of us probably have heard what he's done 50 bazillion times. Oh, I know what you're talking about, Matt. You're talking about the cross. You're talking about him dying on the cross. You're talking about the life that he lived. You're talking about the example that he did. You're talking about the rules that he gave, you know. And let me just say, if, if we think of it that way, then obviously it's not really that valuable to us because we haven't caught the, uh, the meat of it, Okay. But Jesus has done something. Jesus has done something. And I want to illustrate just something that he's done from the book of Luke, which we're going to look at. I'm going to get the team up now, the music team. That'd be great. But I just want to look at this one passage from Luke. And... We're just going to dig into it, all right? Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Don't let my dry jokes, don't let fatigue, don't let your phone get in the way of this, guys. We're looking at God's Word. Okay, pause your chats. I like the picture. That's good. Keeping it for later. I respect that. Very good. 
Okay, here we go. Now, this is a story, right, where Jesus gets invited over for dinner and someone comes to the party. I just want to read the first part of this and then I'm going to flesh it out. So, it says, one of the Pharisees, which is just a religious leader, asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So, Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Now, this alabaster jar probably was made out of like marble. Probably was, wasn't too big, but it was extremely valuable. Okay, some say around like equivalent twenty to $30,000. Okay, worth of. The jar was expensive and the perfume within it was expensive. It wasn't just like links. Okay? So, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. All right. You know, we see here that this woman brings her most valuable possession that she has, and she just gives it all to Jesus, pours it out, okay? This jar was most likely either going to be kept to mourn a family member who passed away or it was going to be given as a gift when she got married or used when she got married, okay? It was precious, it was expensive, and it says here that she was an immoral woman, which in other versions of the Bible, sorry, other Gospels, Um, it's most likely that she sort of sold herself for money, okay? That's what other versions say, that she was selling herself for money, okay? So she takes something, she's selling herself for money. So obviously she's desperate for money, but she's keeping this jar and it's so valuable to her and yet she gives it up. The most valuable thing is now worthless to her because of what she knows she can get from Jesus, okay? Okay? As we go through this story, which I'm not going to do right now, I want to do that another time maybe, but what we see here is that Jesus later does something for this woman, just like Jesus does something for Paul, okay? But how do you get it? What do you have to do? Well, you have to be like this woman and you have to bring the things that are valuable to you And you need to lay them at the feet of Jesus. Now, I don't know what's going in your brain about what is valuable. Okay, I don't know whether it's boyfriend, phone, fears, anxieties, I don't know. But the way that you begin to see Jesus and begin to open your heart to the value of Jesus is you have to humble yourself. You have to bring something to the table. You have to come with humility. This woman showed us what humility is. She came, she brought her most valuable thing, but she gave it up so that she could have something better. And tonight, you actually have the chance to do the same. You know, perhaps you've heard what Jesus has done a million times, and it just doesn't seem as valuable as what you've got. Maybe you're here and you've never actually heard about what a Jesus is. But you've got some valuable things, but there's an emptiness. There's something more that you need. Maybe you just have no faith that what Jesus offers is actually better and that you feel like you can attain that from some other way. Whatever it is, whatever you think is more valuable than Jesus, you can right now, pour it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask someone to come and grab this pulpit. Ryan, yeah, do it, man. Just come and grab it and take it over there. We're going to make some space. Okay. I want to just tell you, as I was preparing this late at night, I was just asking, because what I, what I pictured right now was people, thanks, Ryan, shout out. Shout out. 
I, I want to tell you what, how I saw this sort of part going, okay? I saw people, young people, leaders even, who wanted to sort of do what the woman did in this story, where God, by His Spirit, pointed out to you things that have extremely high value in your life, and He would call you to lay them down. Right? So I asked God, okay, God, what are some things that are in this room that maybe people need to lay down, or that if you came with humility, you could lay it down and receive something infinitely more valuable than what you've got in your hand right now. And so the first thing, I saw a young girl dropping her fear of what others think about her. Her fear is the most valuable thing because her fear keeps her safe, but she's going to drop it to get something infinitely safer. Because the word teaches that our God is a refuge to those who seek Him. He's a shield to those who equip Him. You know, I saw a leader dropping their doubt in God. Someone who may prefer right now to not actually be here and to be out doing something else because every Friday they go home, they look at their Instagram story, They see what some of their school friends are doing right now on a Friday night and they go, oh man, I don't know if this is as valuable. I don't know if Jesus is better. But that they would drop that tonight. I saw many young people dropping a video game addiction. Their games were the thing that they are living for. They're striving to be, I don't know, Tifu or Ninja or whatever. I don't even know. Okay. It was their thing to live for, to be at the top. But they wanted to bring something valuable. They wanted to bring something that means so much to them and drop it at Jesus' feet tonight, right? I saw an older girl, now don't catch me here, drop her boyfriend at the feet of Jesus. (laughs) Literally drop, okay? She loves him so much, but she needs the love of Jesus, to help remind her of the comparison between the true love of an infinite loving God and the imperfect love of an imperfect man who can never live up to that love, just so the balance is right. And I saw another leader drop their secret sin at the altar. Their most prized possession, because they don't want anyone to see it. They hide it away, keep it locked in a drawer. It's like, I've got to keep this. This is mine. I'm not going to let anyone see this, because this is my most prized possession that I'm going to hold on to. And many other things, many other things. I don't know what it is for you tonight that's valuable to you, but you have an opportunity right now to come and just drop it, open your life up to Jesus, and then when you do that and you hear what Jesus has done, then something changes. And it doesn't just become Pastor Matt speaking at the Easter service, talking about, you know, the cross and all that sort of stuff. It becomes something that's actually infinitely more valuable than what you have right now. Amen?